Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on how to effectively use PowerPoint. This can apply to presentations, to public speaking, to meetings around the boardroom table, even demonstrations. PowerPoint is one of those fantastic audio visual tools, but it is also a audio visual tool that is poorly used. I read some research a while back from Microsoft and they estimated that every single day, today is one of them, there's 30 million PowerPoint presentations delivered around the world, of which 29 million fail to have impact, fail to create the message, the influence that the speaker or facilitator hoped to achieve. So about one in 30 PowerPoints hit the mark. My aim today is to give you some tips that you may be able to use within your PowerPoint planning and your PowerPoint presentation the next time you speak. That's my aim. So Peter Jews, my name, I'm a public speaking trainer and coach and my passion is helping you to be more effective and more confident in your presentation and your public speaking throughout your life, throughout your career. Some rules for today, ask questions as we go, feel free to take notes and I do record this webinar so it is available should I speak too fast, should you miss something, should you wish to review it. And importantly, apply the knowledge, apply the ideas and think about them to your own personal circumstances. You can reflect on a previous presentation you've delivered. Was there anything that you'd do differently with your PowerPoint and the way you use PowerPoint as a result of this webinar. Maybe you're planning in the future. What might you do differently to have more impact with your PowerPoint slides? So what are we going to cover today? Why use PowerPoint? If so many PowerPoint presentations go wrong, why do we use it? Why not just get rid of it? Common mistakes. How do we eliminate the noise? And this is the visual noise in PowerPoint. How to use smart art. It's just one of the tools that can make your PowerPoint slides a little bit interest, more interesting. And where to get your graphics and your images from? What are some of the things you can do to just jazz up and make your PowerPoint slides more engaging? All right. And please ask questions as we go. So the first point, why use PowerPoint? This is some research that came out of Stanford University and it's around engagement and retention. So if you speak to a group of people, then one in 10 is likely to remember what you said. It's a very poor return on investment. Second point is if you add visual images, then you increase retention to 30%. So this is where PowerPoint comes in. Some people are visual learners, just show me, show me. Others are kinesthetic, let me feel it, let me experience it. And of course, the final one is if you tell stories, you give examples that are engaging, that create emotions, that take people on an emotional journey, then you're increasing your retention rate by 70%. So PowerPoint fits into the visual aid that adds to the retention. It can also be used to illustrate and build on your stories. This is why PowerPoint, flip chart, keynote if you're using, if you're using Apple computers, is important to you and 
visual handouts rather than just notes also adds. So PowerPoint is one of your visual aids. So that's why we use PowerPoint. Some common mistakes. The first common mistake is reading off your slides word for word, almost like a teleprompter, as if you are the news reader. When you read off slides, it's disrespectful to your audience. It means you haven't done your preparation. It means that you may as well be reading off a written speech. And you, you, you know engaging an audience, you can't just read word for word from a speech, from a script and be truly engaging, truly present, truly able to attend to the audience's needs and reactions. So common mistake number one. The second one is bullet points. We have a saying amongst professional speakers that bullet points have the effect of shooting your audience to death one bullet at a time. So bullet points are when you have that dot or that asterisk and then you have a sentence, then you have another dot and then a sentence. These would be bullet points if I hadn't put them in a hierarchical sequence and I frame them. And this is smart art. Too much noise. I'll speak about noise later on. These are the whiz bangs, the sounds, the twirly bits, the fades, the curtains that reveal to you the point. Keep your slides clean and make them pop. Clean and simple. Too many slides. Too many slides is just slide after slide after slide after slide. People don't remember that much. If you've got lots of technical information, I would put the slides into a handout, give the people the handout to take away or refer. And if you prefer paperless, put the handout up in the clouds in a shared drive, in Dropbox, in a Get Talk repository so that people can read the exact details and the nuances and go deeper. You don't need too many slides. So, and leaving the slides up for too long. So they're common mistakes. What do I mean by leaving the slides up? It means that if I now start talking about storytelling, I'm leaving a slide up that has no reference to storytelling whatsoever. and I need to bring that slide down. And I'll talk about that later on. So there are the common mistakes. So how do you eliminate the noise? Keep your slides clean. Noise includes logos on every slide. Your web page, www.peterg.com.au. Page number, too much background. Fancy fade-ins, the curtains, the whiz-bangs, the actual sounds, the ka the the applause, the telephone, those things that you click and something happens as the slide appears. That doesn't keep the slide clear and simple. So try to eliminate the noise and keep your slides clean. And we use the terminology so they pop. What I mean by pop is that you look at the slide and you know what the point is straight away without having to delve too deep. I'll show you the difference between a clean slide that pops and a very noisy slide as we go on. So eliminate the noise. So good slides, bad slides. This is a relatively noisy slide. You've got my corporate logo down there. You've got my phone number, feel free to give me a ring. You've got my website, you've got my photo. Why do you need my photo on my slide? You've also got my page number. And holy dooly, we're on a 30 minute webinar and I've got 75 slides. One would could suggest that those slides too many for 30 minutes. How am I going to get through 75 slides? I don't have 75 slides. 
So this is your bullet points. Once again, a noisy slide. I've left the picture. I've left the page number. Bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, bullet point four, bullet point five. That is death by PowerPoint. That is shooting your audience one bullet at a time. A more visual way of doing it would be, oh, and here's the noise, by the way. Just go back. Now watch these slides jump, these bullets jump up and down. That is noise. That is noise. Let me do that again for you. You don't need it. So that is noise and that's death by bullet point. Another way of doing it would be to make things swirl around. The curtain fades. Why do I need this? Still a noisy slide, the visual noise that's swirling around. It's got my website, my page number. But this is an example of smart art. So it's a bit more representative. So are your bullet points circular, hierarchical? Do they spread off in a tree? So there's, you can use smart art to still cover your points, but just don't do them as straight bullet points one after the other. So here's the tool. It's called smart art. When you go to PowerPoint, you just go into smart art, click on convert to smart art. You click on that and you have a whole different format of doing things. This is done from Smart Art. If we take away the noise, the swirling around, that is done from Smart Art. That is just my bullet points. So you would take those bullet points, then you would use the Smart Art tool and it would turn it to this representation. What I would suggest is you don't do the animation, the swirling. That's your smart art tool. You can change colors. So you know my corporate color is mostly blue. My logo. So this is a cleaner slide. This slide doesn't have my photo. There's no website, there's no page number. I want you to look at the smart art. Here's another example of turning those same five points, those same five points into a sequence. And that's when you have a sequential as opposed to a circular. You can use Smart Art to create that. I've still got my website and my page number, my photo, so it's still a little bit noisy. There's a cleaner slide. Now you can look at point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, whatever they may be. You don't need to know we're on page 7 of 75. You don't need to remember time and time and time again what my website is. I showed you my website on my opening slide. I'll show you my website on my closing slide. A much cleaner slide. Another example. Point one, point two, point three, point four, point five, and this is almost like a pyramid. So point five should be the base, and then point four follows. Maslow's hierarchy of needs would be a perfect example of having the different points, but layered with what you need: your your safety and and uh, physiological need, food, shelter first, before you get up to the top where you meet your your actualization but there it is again without the noise are there any questions yeah good good question Stephen I get this question all the time 
I work for a corporate organization and they have a template with the logo and the website and the branding on every slide. Now that is a tough one and I guess, it, and it comes from marketing and branding, your, your marketing or your, your public relations team that determines that this is what your template will look like. But I specialize in public speaking and communication and, and having influence. If you put something on the slide that dilutes your message, dilutes your impact, negates what you're trying to do, surely common sense would suggest that you remove it, that you don't cause distractions. I saw one presentation by a renowned speaker and the back Background, the entire background was a grey canvas with different tools, different working tools, hammers, saws, drill bits, spoke shaves, crosscut saws, planes, chisels, screwdrivers, vices, clamps, spoke shaves, I've said spoke shaves. I, every slide I was just looking at the different tools. It was just embedded in the background of the slide. And then it had the same words, but see where I've got white? Just imagine a canvas with millions of different types of tools. I'm a visual learner and I was looking at that. I watched a video the other day from a financial services company and they have this fancy logo and it's, it's almost like those puzzles, a jigsaw puzzle with bits of wood that are interlocked. And I can't work out how they've done it. I'm trying to solve it. It's on the screen. I'm looking at it. How have they, it's an optical illusion. I've lost the message. Now, having said that, Stephen, when you go to your marketing or your branding department, if it's a big organization and they say, well, we don't care, this is the corporate brand, then you've done the best you can. But as a person who understands the science of influence and persuasion, you are diluting your ability to have impact. Really great point. All right, let's move on. Let's take all of this together and show you what I mean by a slide that is clean and pops. So here's Western Australia's wheat yields from the year 2000 to 2006. It's quite a nice slide. Um, my photo's there, I'm actually pointing at the graph and this is yields per tonnes. In case you don't know, don't know what wheat looks like, that's what wheat looks like. There's my logo again. There's my website. We're still at page 7 of 75. And I've got, whoa, 12 minutes to go. I'm in real trouble here. There's my website yet again. It's a really noisy slide. What do all these colours mean? What do, it's a bar graph. What do all these colours mean? what happened in 2003. That's all we need to know. In fact, my logo off to the left, the bottom corner, I should remove that logo. And of course, we're talking about the drought of 2003. Now this could be vaccination rates. This could be the rate of immunization for whooping cough. This could be the incidence of flu. We're having a spike in flu as I speak. The data, the point of the PowerPoint slide is to pop so we can now have a discussion around, around what happened in 2003. That's what it's all about. So all the different colors are necessary. When I show that image, people straight away, their eyes are drawn to 203. That's an example of a clean slide.
crop yields from 2000 to 2006. Does your PowerPoint slide pop? Do you need to interpret and describe what's on your PowerPoint slide? Can people see the point that you're trying to illustrate immediately? So graphics and images, where do they come from? Sources of image. You can use Microsoft Clipart. It's got better quality now and they use Bing. So you go to Bing and when you pull up an image, it often gives you a royalty free and you can use it for corporate reasons. You can use iStock photo, a deposit photo. These are commercial stock photo sites where you will pay something between a dollar to five dollars per high resolution image, but it's now yours to use. You brought the license to use that in a commercial sense. If you're working in a organization, doing training, doing board meetings, then that is a commercial sense. If you're using it for your own personal use, then you don't have to pay for the royalties. Deposit photos is the other one. You can use the free ones, Unsplash, another one is, is Pixabay, and they are royalty free and you can use them for commercial reasons. I find Unsplash and Pixabay very good and they have more softer, realistic pictures. You can use your own photos. Use your own photos in your presentations. The opening slide of this presentation was a photo of me in front of a live audience. And then it had the title of the webinar across. Or you can create them using PowerPoint, Microsoft Paint or some other design software. So some images that I sometimes use. This is one I've created. Logo's gone, page number's gone, website's gone. I try to move people in public speaking from nerves to excitement. And I talk about biochemistry and physiology. As a medical scientist with a specialty in biochemistry, I can talk about some of the hormones that are released during nervousness and the physiological impact those hormones and chemicals have on your body. Then I move to excitement and it turns out the same chemicals are released during excitement and have a similar impact, the vasoconstrictin of your blood vessels. And I learnt, teach people to be excited as opposed to nervousness. That's a simple image I've created myself. These are some unsplash photos. When I'm talking about active listening, these are royalty free and you can use them in a commercial sense. Once again, that is all I need to talk about good active listening. And that reminds me to talk about empathic listening. A death by PowerPoint. What do I mean by death by PowerPoint? I mean bullet points. I mean too many slides. I mean noise. I mean reading off the slide one word at a time as if you're reading across your teleprompter, reading the seven o'clock news and the weather in Perth today is turning stormy at 5 p.m. That is very disrespectful. These images, this slide is all I need to talk about doing death by PowerPoint. Some other simple things, just a picture and I can talk about the fear of public speaking and the microphone alone is enough to put fear into people's lives. Public speaking is mankind's number one fear. Dying is number two, snakes is number three, spiders is number four. Simple picture. I talk about being authentic and genuine. You may as well be yourself, everyone else is taken. That's a quote by Oscar Wilde. And in reality, what you want from me today is not some plastic, rehearsed, plumb in the mouth, radio quality voice, fake person teaching you how to use PowerPoint effectively. You want me with my pimples, my warts, my imperfections, my bald head, my big nose. This is authenticity, this is all I need. In fact, I don't need both pictures, that guarantee of authenticity or that tick, tick, tick 
to make sure you're authentic, genuine, honest, and the passion needs to come through. Keep it simple. One speaker's going around the rabbit warren, round and round the garden. The other one gets to the point, keeps it simple, nails his message, has impact. These are examples of visuals that I use. Now, this is a deposit photo. I paid $1 for this one. And I sometimes use this for the principle of keeping it simple, your message, your idea. And remember one of the mistakes was leaving your PowerPoint up. I said, bring your PowerPoint slide down. Now this is the magic of the B and the W key on your laptop or your keyboard. And you can also buy a PowerPoint clicker, but I'm just going to show you what happens when I hit B. You can only do this in presentation mode. You haven't lost me, nothing's gone wrong. I've just hit the B button. There's nothing on the screen. Where does everyone's eyes turn when you're speaking, when you're facilitating? They turn back to you and you now have their attention. Then you want to go back and show them the data, the slide. You put B again and the slides back up. You want a white slide? Maybe it's nice and clean to have a white and you hit W and the slide goes white. Once again, there's nothing to see here, nothing on the screen and the eyes go back to you wherever you're sitting, standing, and you now have the audience engaged. Hit the W again and you're back. One of the mistakes is that people leave their PowerPoint slides up for the entire presentation. As I've done today, but that is webinar land. I can silence the PowerPoint and just show my head, but then you've just got my voice. Therefore, one in 10 of you will remember what I've said. So we need the visual. The magic of the B for black and the W for white. Next time you're in presentation mode, just hit B and see your screen go black. And then everyone in the room will look at you. So in summary, why use PowerPoint? It's one of your visual aids, common mistakes, death by PowerPoint, bullet points, reading from your slides, leaving your slides up the whole time. Please eliminate the noise. These are the transitions, the fades, the twirly, the drop-ins, any audios, ka-chings. Ka Use smart art to simplify and make sure your slides pop and use some graphics and images rather than just words. Got some workshops coming up in Bunbury in June, Perth in July, a whole range. Then we're heading off to Melbourne, 5th of August, two workshops, Darwin in October, and quite happy to, on any of these, run some additional workshops. Next webinar, how to write a killer speech. How to craft your speech so it's influential and impactful. Are there any last questions before we wrap up this webinar? Need any information, send me an email. Now remember, PowerPoint is a valuable tool to add to your presentation, your meeting, your public speaking. It's a visual aid. That's why we use it. But don't do death by PowerPoint. There are some simple tools I've taught you today that will make your PowerPoint slides pop and you will be able to be more engaging, more memorable every time that you speak. Bye for now. <laughs>